Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Sorry if I sound a bit nasally, I'm just recovering from a cold, just a cold, not COVID. And I'm talking to you today about the books that I read in February 2022. I literally cannot believe I'm filming this in March. Sorry, where did 2020 go, let alone 2021, let alone three months into 2022? So first of all, I don't have it with me, but I read Monster Donuts 2 Cyclops on a Mission, which is a kid's book, as you would have guessed. And I read Monster Donuts, the first one in the series, um, I think it was last year now, and just just loved it full of monsters full of monsters full of donuts full of explosions a really funny kids book um, and highly recommend like I'm enjoying it as an adult um, and this was the second book in the series and the third one comes out and I think it's about August time 2022 the next one I kind of don't want to talk about this because I don't like to talk about negative reviews that much um, especially books that I've been gifted but um, I was sent After the Rain by Lucy Dillon just want to say the cover is really cute it's like that it's about a flooding and it happens in this town and it's about a therapist and her clients coming to her talking about it and her experience of it and her dad's just come back in her life and her boyfriend's just gone away and it's like, I think he's like broken up with her and stuff so overall the plot I found really really good like I thought that it was a really good idea just personally I didn't gel with it I don't know what it is I don't know if maybe I was in a bit of a reading slump at the time or what but I just found it really slow to get into I did read about third and I just wasn't enjoying it and it literally took me over two three weeks maybe even because I started it in January into February and I just thought you know what I've got to stop reading it so I don't feel like I can comment on it because I've not read the full book but I just personally didn't gel with it that doesn't mean that someone else might not and um, just for me it just was quite slow and not a lot was happening so I decided to put this one down I'm gonna keep it and maybe pick it up again in future but for now I read a third of that so as you guys know I've been getting into audiobooks recently so the next one I read was an audiobook and um, I didn't actually use my audible credit for this this is part of like the audible subscription thing where it kind of comes for free so it's called this year will be different tying into the theme of like new year's resolutions starting a new year um it's a non-fiction book about kind of like self-help and changing your mindset etc it's a very short book i think it was literally like 10 chapters long or something and each one was quite short so it wasn't very long to finish um i did quite enjoy this i was listening to it often when tidying my room so it felt almost like quite therapeutic really recommend that one um nothing like major new in it or anything I wouldn't say um but as a whole I did enjoy that it's also worth mentioning I think that is just an audiobook when I try to find like a paperback picture to put on my bookstagram I couldn't find it so I have the feeling it's just an audiobook however it does come with like a free workbook which I found quite cool so as part of the audible when you download it and if you go onto I think the author's website you get like a free workbook worksheet with it as well the next couple of books that I read or listened to were kind of along the same themes, along mindset, along mental health, along self-help, that kind of thing, which I, I spoke about this recently, but like I hate when people put down when people read self-help books because self-help books is such a I suppose broad genre and like I've always really liked them I've always found them to really help me and I think like how are you putting down something and kind of being like snobby about it I guess about what other people enjoy and that might actually really help them just because it doesn't help you doesn't mean it won't help someone else I think there is the tendency for self-help books to be quite repetitive and like a lot of the time things are said when that's been said many times before but if that's the first time you're hearing it then I don't see a problem with that for example last year I read Sarah Knight's um, Get Your Shit Together and I really really loved that I did a whole video on that because I really enjoyed it and when I read the reviews afterwards I almost felt like oh maybe I shouldn't have enjoyed this much because so many people were saying like oh it's not like all her ideas weren't that new and stuff and it's like but they were new to me and she articulated it well so there we go like I enjoyed it so why are you kind of I, I don't know I've just seen a lot on like Twitter and stuff about people saying like oh self-help books self-help books but let's read what we want so the next book that I read was, oh, I don't have it with me. Uh, the next book I had that I read was Working Hard, Hardly Working by Grace Beverly. So Grace Beverly is an entrepreneur. She founded Tala and Shreddy, which I think they're like fashion brands, sustainable brands. At the time she was at Oxford University. She had a YouTube channel where she shares her journey and just her general life. I've always just really liked her. I found her to be really open, really honest. She talks about like the struggles of being at Oxford um, and she actually says in this book that it was actually a really dumb thing to do to find, like um, start these two companies while at Oxford. Sorry, I'm really struggling to talk. So when I've seen things that she's put on social media and when she's been on interviews and stuff, I really do like her mindset and so I was really excited for this book and I hate to say it, but I was slightly disappointed. I felt that it was a very slow book, like it's it's not a massive book, but at the same time things were being dragged out. It kind of contradicted my point earlier, things were kind of repetitive. Um, she was repeating herself a lot. I just, I don't know, I think I had like really high expectations maybe for this and it wasn't as I was hoping. I wouldn't say it was a bad book, I'm still glad I read it, but it just wasn't what I was expecting. Um, 
So it's called working hard, hardly working because the first half is about productivity and being successful and finding these businesses, etc. And then the second half is hardly working. So it's about mind reset, giving yourself self care, time to rest, that kind of thing. Because going into it, you might think there's this white girl that's um, like she admits she's quite privileged and she went to Oxford and she founded these two companies, but she was actually saying that was the dumbest thing that she's done and that she almost wished she didn't because although they'd been really successful, that was a stupid move to make and she was really struggling at the time of doing it um, so I really respect her being open and honest about that and that you know it's not all about this complete hustle culture we do have to give time for ourselves as well yeah so I'm glad I finished it I, I will say as well the start was really addictive like I was on the train I couldn't put it down it was really gripping to start with but I did feel like after a couple of chapters it did start to kind of like get a bit slower I suppose and I quite like the fast paced books so I mentioned audiobooks and I'm so glad that my one credit I got for audible this month I spent on Stephen Bartlett's Happy Sexy Millionaire this is a hardback book and I'll go on to it in a second but I almost wish that I have it in hardback as well. I listened to it as an audiobook which is narrated by the author Stephen Bartlett himself um, and I just thought it was fantastic. Stephen Bartlett if you don't already know he's like an entrepreneur, he founded a social media company, he's now on Dragon's Den, he's very very successful and very young, I think he's like 28, 29 and he's like a millionaire and so when you pick up this book it's called Happy Sexy Millionaire and it's almost like how to be this happy sexy millionaire and quite early on he basically says you've picked this book up for the wrong reasons because I'm not going to tell you how to be a happy sexy millionaire and that's not what you should strive to be so when he talks about happiness he talks about fulfillment and being okay in yourself when he talks about sexy he talks about relationships and being lovable and when he talks about being a millionaire he doesn't tell you how to be a millionaire he's talking about how to just feel successful and be successful so I really liked that um, output to it and I felt that every chapter was named something quite quirky quite different I felt that he articulates himself so well he seems a really respectable guy from everything I've seen online he seems a perfect balance between humble and proud you know he's obviously done such great stuff at such a young age which I'm very jealous of um, and he's you know he acknowledges that he's not sort of boasty at the same time I felt that his book had a lot of good examples it was a it was a mix between like a memoir and like a self-help inspiring kind of book and yeah I just loved it and as I said I listened to it as an audible and I do kind of wish now that I might like go and buy it as a hardback because there are so many um, things that he said in it that like quote worthy and I want to underline or highlight or write down or whatever and with that said it's also something that I would consider listening to again and just oh, and just they're doing building work and just have on in the background and um, again like when I do audiobooks I tend to be doing something like tidying my room or clearing out some things or doing housework so it's it's things that feel kind of like therapeutic at the same time so I would definitely consider like listening to it on repeat starting a random chapter again so I mentioned that obviously there's a lot of things in there that really quote worthy but one thing um, I noted down was he's talking about discovering yourself and that kind of thing and he said you can read as many books as you like but if you're unable to read yourself you'll never learn a thing and I thought that was so powerful and that is just one sample of what the whole book is like um, so yeah really highly recommend that and um, really enjoyed that I then moved on to another kids book that I haven't actually finished yet I'm about halfway through and this is a workbook this is The Ogres and the Orphans by Kelly Barnhill Kelly Barnhill uh, we've also got another book of hers coming out in the year called When Women Were Dragons it's kind of a YA kind of an adult book about kind of feminism and when women in the 1950s basically turn into dragons when they feel oppressed um, but this book of hers The Ogress and the Orphans is about an ogress and it's about a town where oh my god there's someone literally in the back of our card that's so creepy our garden backs onto a railway um, and I think they're doing railway work Row, row, all that's the tongue twister. Railway work, and I can literally see him over the fence. Okay. So the ogres and the orphans, there was a fire that destroyed the library, so I love the fact that it includes a library in here, um, and one of the orphans goes missing, and everyone t turns and blames the ogress, um, and it's basically a story about kindness, about gratitude. It's got almost like an eerie feel, and I feel like you can kind of get that from the cover as well. It's a beautiful cover, but it's kind of got this dark, eerie feel throughout it. Um, as I said, I'm about I'm there, so I'm about probably halfway through, um, so that is the kids' one by Kelly Barnhill that comes out. Has it come out yet? March? And then the final book that I read in February 2022 was Open Water. This book I have seen so much. It's almost like a book talk, bookstagram book where I've seen so much about it and I bought it not knowing what it's about. Actually, tell a lot, I didn't buy it. Um, I put this on my wish list and I got it for my birthday. And then weirdly, the publisher actually sent it to me as well, but I don't know who sent it to me because it didn't come with a press release or anything. But yeah, so I've actually got two copies of these. So look out for a giveaway soon, which is going to include this. It's a very small book, which I really like. I like 
smaller books I can get through them a lot quicker obviously this is about two black people living in London and they're both kind of like work in the arts industry and it's a almost, it's basically like their love story and about what it's like um, living in London for them plot wise not an awful lot happens but I don't think that's an issue in the book the book is so beautifully written there are so many really really powerful sentences in it and I think Caleb the author is seriously talented with the things that he comes up with I feel like this is his debut yes no yes a debut novel novel of 2021 and it's obviously really successful it won the costa book awards 2021 it's definitely a marmite book so on the back i actually read when i got it it's a, it's it's compared to sally rooney who, sally rooney who i don't like not as a person but i don't like her writing style i find her writing style very um like an acquired taste that's such a it's such a like she's like a love hate like normal people literally worst book i've read sorry but yeah and so I, when I saw this was compared to her I was a little bit apprehensive but it kind of like gave me the right mindset going into it it's not going to be sort of action packed it's more going to be about the words and the character development as opposed to the plot so I'm glad that I kind of knew that going in so I would just say like don't expect anything like massive to happen in it it's more about the kind of messages behind it so it's definitely a Marmite book I did enjoy it it literally because it's so small I read it in about two sittings I'm really struggling to talk I haven't talked this long and haven't talked this much in so long which is unheard of for me I can't remember if I mentioned this or not but I've moved over from Goodreads to Storygraph and 100% recommend um it's a lot more modern it's a lot more there's a lot of stats and graphs and stuff in it which I really like and I'm ahead on my reading goal at the moment which is fun and also not like me I will also mention with open water is written in second person so if you don't know what that means so first person is when you'll say like I this I that we this and it's coming from that person the, the narrator the character third person is when there's a dissociation between the narrator and the characters so it'll be like they did this they did this Elena did this etc and second person is saying you so it's you walk into the bar and you sit down next to this person which I don't think I've ever actually read a full book where it's done that throughout so that was quite different for me and initially I thought oh my god this is going to put me off this is not this is completely outside my comfort zone but I did get used to it so don't feel like that will put you off um because it didn't for me so they're all the books that I read in February 2022 as I said I'm currently going to finish uh, the ogres and the orphans but I've also started a new book called six days which I'm loving at the moment this is a beautiful proof copy from head of Zeus it's written by Danny Atkins who I believe has um, published books before it's, it's called six days it's basically about a groom that doesn't turn up to his uh, wedding and the bride is certain that he wouldn't he wouldn't leave her and and so she thinks something terrible's happened so she goes on this quest for the next six days to discover what's happened to him it absolutely gives me the ends of the earth's vibes by abby Gr abby grease um i love that book it's about her husband that goes missing and she's on this search to find him like there's a load of similarities in that and i don't have a problem with that because i love the ends of the earth gave it the five out of five so it's set um each each kind of like section of the book is a day so i'm on day two at the moment which is about that far in it skips in time as well so it goes back to the past when they first met which again is really similar to the end of the earth and then it goes to the present day where she's trying to find out what's happened to him so this is a proof copy so i'll let you know more once i've finished it but really really enjoying it so far they are all the books that i read in february 2022 sorry if this has been a really like i've been really dull or whatever talking about as i said i'm just coming out of a cold um which is why i sound a little bit different as well um but yeah let me know if you've read any of them i'd love to know um especially on like open water which i think is a love hate one yeah and see you in my next one bye